All right, so we're going to dive on in. Uh, appreciate everybody for joining. We're going to talk today about YouTube thumbnails. And uh, it's a, you know, really interesting and, and important topic. Um, and it's amazing to me because I see a lot of agents out there who are, you know, really getting into video, uh, doing more video content, and maybe even doing more with their YouTube channels but don't necessarily or haven't figured out um, the best ways to set up their YouTube thumbnails and the images for it. And a lot of folks might be saying, well, why is that important? What, you know, isn't a, a great video with great content enough? And sadly, in today's world of YouTube, uh, it just isn't quite enough. So um, when you talk about YouTube and, uh, and you know, the importance of it, we're going to dive into that today. Um, we're also going to dive into some strategies you can use to create thumbnails, just the, the theory of it or more of the bigger picture stuff uh, that you can look into. And then we're going to take you into um, a tool. Today we're, we'll be using Canva again, uh, but we'll take you into a tool where you can set up um, and easily set up templates for your own uh, YouTube thumbnails. Now, before I get into that, um, I just want to mention quick here that uh, these workshops that Craig and I do um, uh, at three Mondays out of a month, so this, this month's a little short, but um, pretty much three Mondays out of a month, Craig and I are doing free workshops right here in the Agent Inner Circle group. Uh, and these are brought to you by both of our organizations. So I just want to Take a second here to mention uh, who these free workshops are brought to you by. First of all, is the Real Estate Technology Institute. Um, Craig, do you just want to mention what the the uh, RETI does for for a second for folks? Sure, absolutely. So um, RETI and the website is reti.us, like United States. Um, we are um, a whole team. Like Alex is part of the team. Um, I'm the owner and run it, but. We have uh, several other um, international speakers and just tech and marketing experts on our team. And we're all independent speakers and experts, but um, we're all friends. And we kind of come together to run the RETI site as a team. And therefore, we have every single Wednesday a different webinar, every single Wednesday at 4 o'clock Eastern. Um, and we have, you know, like we do these workshops with AIC. And we have over 2,500 instructional videos and product reviews and webinars we've done in the past. Um, and it's all about just helping today's realtor learn about tech, learning about marketing, and more importantly, having that stuff work for you and not against you in your business. Because most realtors are terrified of tech, and we try to really kind of make it as easy as possible for you. So Absolutely. that's what the site is. It's just you go there anytime you want. You pop in if you're a member and can watch any little short video how to do something, or learn about a product in the industry, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Good call, Craig. So um, if folks are interested in any sort of tech training, want to learn more about tech in their business, things like that, the Real Estate Technology Institute is a great, great opportunity for you. So definitely check mm -hmm. that out. Some uh, associations even, even have it uh, as a member benefit. So um, you can check that out as well, too. So the yep. other in one... Fact, we're, we're launching our, the Orlando Partnership tomorrow. Orla uh, 17,000 members or of Orlando the, uh, tomorrow. Orlando I love account, it. So. We definitely have some folks yep. in from, uh, from Florida as well. Delray Beach, uh, New Tampa, Wesley. I love it. I love it. Awesome. So... Um, Craig mentioned the Real Estate Technology Institute. I'm, I'll mention uh, the other um, sponsor today, the other folks who are bringing this to you is the uh, group called Service for Life. Um, Service for Life is a monthly newsletter, and it's not like any of the typical monthly newsletters that you see out there. Um, it is personal. It gets opened. It gets read. It gets responded to. And what always blows me away is how many agents out there uh, have built a 100% referral business um, where they do 100% of the business that, uh, that they get by referral. Um, simply because they use uh, Service for Life. It's it's wild to see. So if you have a second, definitely check that out as well. We greatly appreciate it. Um, but that being said, let's dive on in here, Craig, and uh, and let everybody know, first of all, why actually do a thumbnail? We have Paula Montover in chat. What up, Paula? Hello, hello. Good. hello. Up, Paula? My, my good friend, Paula. We got some, Paula and I got some uh, some cool news that we're going to be sharing with folks. I'm not going to spill the beans yet. Don't worry, Paula. I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to do this yet, but we've got some, Paula and I have a, a very cool project. Um, for those that don't know Paula, she is an incredible realtor out of Arizona. Uh, she is a, a Arizona state president, former state president for the association. Uh, actually two time, I want to say two time president, I think. 
Um, but she's just awesome. She's also a speaker, um, speaks all over the country and uh, just incredible human being in general. So um, Paula and I we are working on a project together that I cannot tell everybody about yet. But <laughs> but let me tell you, it is one heck of a project. And uh, I'm so excited for when we actually do get to. She just said to the chat, she's she's cut, cut me. I know. That's what I told you. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not spilling the beans today. But be on the lookout for something from Paula and myself um, because we have something pretty cool coming up. So, all right, let me get into it. Um, as we're talking about today is YouTube thumbnail images. And we, we targeted this one specifically. Um, this was enough to be state president. That's fair. That's fair. I was just being hopeful for your state that they'd get you again because you're so cool. Um, all right. So YouTube thumbnails, uh, we, we wanted to dive into this topic specifically, uh, as we're covering YouTube in general, because it's kind of amazing how important the YouTube thumbnails are when it comes to creating videos that really get seen, get views. Um, get interacted with, go to the top of the charts, all that sort of stuff, get recommended um, by YouTube. So, um, and this is actually a statistic right from Google. So right from YouTube themselves is saying, excuse me, 90% of the best per performing videos on YouTube have custom thumbnails. 90%. Okay, 90% of those have them. And generally... Um, these thumbnails are going to be the first thing that people see, whether uh, it's a preview image that shows up on your website or when you share out that video on social media or other places, um, whether it's in search results, whether it's in the notifications. And I'll actually just sort of show you an example of this is uh, here is if you see there are a few spots where you really need those images to stand out. Um, and be different from everything else that's going on. First one that you see there is uh, if someone has subscribed to your channel, uh, is following you, they'll get a notification on their phone when you put out a new video. You'll notice the thing that really captures and, and you know captivates the eye when, uh, when you see that there, right? Right in the middle there, it's our lovely Agent Inner Circle Canva for Real Estate Workshop. Um, but it's big, it's bold, it stands out and, uh, and makes an impact. The next ones you're going to see there are a couple um, different just searches that I ran. One was uh, moving to Dallas. Uh, moving to various places are a great opportunity um, for, you know, for you. There, there's And Craig and I are going to cover that um, next week. And actually, you know what, Craig, let's, let's talk about this for a second here. So a lot of what we're covering in the thumbnails today are based on understanding how to pick content pick the right type of videos um, that will get seen, will show up in search results. So I'm going to be using some examples today, like moving to Dallas, or I even just searched real estate agent as a general term. And just to see, right, just to sort of see what is coming back and what people are getting for results. Um, but Craig, do you want to just talk for a second about keyword importance, you know, looking that sort of stuff up, and then what we're going to cover in the masterclass next week for that? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, if you guys didn't catch the workshop we did last week um, or the webinar I did last week on the topic, um, I did all, both sessions on kind of video and YouTube channel SEO, like how do you optimize your videos to show up higher? How do you make your channel get indexed more stuff like that? Um, and one of the major things I talked about is how YouTube, which is essentially as Google, completely changed their model about three, four years ago. Um, if you went back a few years ago, it used to be 100% about the video's content, meaning the title, the description, and what was in the video. Um, now, the content of the video is somewhere between 15 to 25% of a video's traffic. So, yes, it still totally matters. Your content matters, uh, and you want to make sure you're picking high traffic, like videos people are looking for in high numbers. Um, but what's really become a much bigger, bigger factor in YouTube's algorithm um, is what's called the recommendation engine, which is, is YouTube going to recommend your video for somebody to go watch it? Where is it going to place it in the results? Um, at the end of someone else's video, is your video possibly going to be recommended to go watch after someone else's video? It's all called the recommendation engine. And the recommendation engine does look at some different metrics, but you really got to make sure when you're creating a video, you're creating good content that people want and are searching a good volume. That's really the key. And 
Yeah. I know we're going to go over that pretty heavily in the in the master class yes. next week. Yep. Exactly. And it, yep. And no, I was just going to say Craig, that's exactly it. Is we're going to cover that in a lot more depth in the master class next week. If folks are interested in that, let us know. I can put the link uh directly into chat and uh you know, welcome to sign up for that. Um but like I said, what what we're going to cover today is once you have those topics that we know are going to get a response that, you know, are, are great for keywords and are going to do good volume in terms of the people that are looking for them. Then it's about creating mm -hmm. an image and making sure that you stand out from the pack of other folks that might be trying to do video surrounding those, uh, those same sort of subjects. Yep. And so we're, we're, what we're talking about today just assumes that we've picked some good video topics. Um, and like I said, we're going to cover that in the masterclass next week. So if you are interested, let us know uh, and we can add that there. Now, um, yeah, and by the way, the number one factor in the algorithm um, for the recommendation engine is click through rate. Mm -hmm. It's how many people are clicking on your video. Um, you know, they actually look at the percentage of that, how many times it's shown in the results, and how many, what percent of people click. And then one factor that determines the click through rate, guess what? It's YouTube, it's the thumbnail. Yep. So, you know, you got to make sure you design these things. It might add a little bit extra time to upload a video and then does it go design that thumbnail, but it's 100% worth it because it, it drives the traffic no matter where people see your video into clicking and watching it. Absolutely. Absolutely does. So, and I'll take you over here and show you sort of the example of that quickly. Um, you see the, after the actual notification in the notification bar, you're going to see two other, and these are just search results. The first one is moving to Dallas. The second one is real estate agent. I just sort of left it open there. Um, so you get some ideas about what people are doing around these topics and what actually stands out. Now you're probably saying, wow, those are, are pretty small. You know, I can't read all the words. I can't read the title, read the description. And I did that on purpose because what you'll notice is that um, there are certain pieces of the images themselves that are standing out um, and calling to you know calling your attention throughout all of it okay and those are the kinds of things that you are shooting for are things that tend to stand out um, things that are a little bit different and we'll cover that in more details but let me pause for a second any questions before we continue on here um, if so let us know in chat and I'll, I'll keep moving on while folks might be plugging those in so um, we mentioned why it's so important right 90 percent of the best performing videos have it um, it's where you show up. It's where people usually look and see your information. But there are some, we'll call them key components. There are some things that you want to make sure um, are, well, are, are sort of accomplished whenever you do these um, that will make you stand out from the pack. So the first one is uh, you want to make a statement. And that statement is, um, it's kind of interesting because when I say make a statement, what I mean by that is not uh, text. What I mean by make a statement is you've got to be bold. You've got to in some way stand out. Um, you've got to, your text has got to stand out in the page. You've got to pop off the page so that when somebody sees that, mm -hmm. they want to take action. They want to go look at that video. They, they want to investigate further. Your goal isn't to necessarily describe the entirety of the video or all the points of what's in your video, right? Your, your video might cover four or five different points, but you know that one or two of those points in that video are the real why people are going to click on it to begin with. You tend to want to focus on the things that are going to make a statement and make an impact when it comes to showing up in search results or showing up in those people's notifications. Now, there are some ways to do this. And these, again, these come right from Google. Um, these are right from YouTube and what their recommendations are for how to create this sort of content. So one that we've talked about before is something called the rule of thirds. Uh, rule of thirds mm. is... And we've talked about this in graphic design. We talked about this in Canva a lot. But if think about it this way. If you break up any image into a grid and uh, there are a third of a page vertically and horizontally, um, you want to show up within those thirds. You don't tend to want to show up in the dead center of a page or the dead center of something. Uh, our eyes don't tend to be attracted to it. 
you want to use what is called the rule of thirds. And if you have questions about that, I, we can talk about it at some other point. There's some great resources if you Google um, rule of thirds that get into it in more depth. But my phone just asked me if I wanted to Google something. No, I'm not talking to you, phone. Um, the next one is catchy titles. And this is something where uh, I think Frag and I are going to talk a little bit more in the masterclass when it comes to mm -hmm. picking keywords and how to develop a catchy title based around a keyword. Um, so instead of, say, just something about moving to Dallas, you can say something along the lines of, uh, avoid these disasters when moving to Dallas. Mm -hmm. Right? Those are things that tend to be yeah. more catchy titles. And I don't know if you have any other examples that you use consistently, Craig. Um, well, I don't, I don't know if I have any examples on my head, but it's more about, and again, this is something we talked about last week. We'll talk about more again as we keep going, but um, it's no longer when you're doing a title about SEO. Like, mm -hmm. does it help to slip in that Dallas keyword in there? Of course it does, right? Um, but it's more about getting people's attention. So when they're scrolling through that feed and there's thousands of other videos, between your thumbnail and your title, yours is the one they want to click on. Yep. So whether it's being really sensational, whether it's just, you know, like the disaster one instead of just how why to move to Dallas, you know, how to avoid the disasters, like whatever it is, it's about grabbing people's attention and, you know, not just, okay, I'm going to talk about Dallas. That's it. Okay. You really want to kind of make some effort in doing that. Yep, exactly. Exactly. And, and I'll even kind of give you an example here um, and we'll, we'll pull you over to the uh, share that here. So I'll pull you over to a live. This is a moving to Dallas, right? And you'll notice that none of these actually say this one says the pros and cons of moving to Dallas, right? I mm -hmm. moved to Dallas from California, living in pros and cons moving in job tips, right? But you'll notice that the the titles here in the thumbnails are not necessarily matched up to what the specific titles are. So this, the, it says the truth, right? So obviously she wants to tell you the truth about moving to Dallas. Yes, exactly. What Paula writes is what I hear you say is create an urgency for them to feel a need to click. Exactly, Paula. Um, Yep. Totally. 100%. That's exactly it is you've got to create some sort of urgency to get them to click. And it doesn't have to necessarily be exactly your title. Um, it can be a little bit different. It can be something that's a little bit more clickbaity, right? I mean, this one is living in Dallas, Texas, and it's don't move here. <laughs> it's his title slide, right? That's a little bit. Oh my God. Yeah, and right? by the way, before you go past that, look at the number of views that one has. 21,000 views. Yeah. Right. Okay? So, I mean, just by giving the, you know, the truth and, you know, why you don't want to move to Dallas. I mean, she's had 21,000 people watch that, which, you know, if that's a realtor doing it, that's a whole lot of free exposure just by, you know, giving you reasons why you do or don't want to move to a certain area. Yep, Exactly. Now, I do want to mention one thing here, though, which is that you you need to be real in that the other thing that YouTube pays a lot of attention to is not just whether people click into your video, but whether they watch your video and whether they stay mm -hmm. and they watch all of the content in it. Now, if your video yes. is total clickbait and the video content has nothing to do with your um, what's in the thumbnail, and people click in, watch for 10 seconds or less and leave, or 90 seconds even and leave. It's based on percentage of, of how big the video is. Um, but if they get in, they don't like it, they leave. All of a sudden, the, the YouTube recommendation engine is, is like, oh my yep. God, I, I hate this video. I'm not going to recommend you um, in other places. So just kind of keep that in mind in terms of you want to you want to include some clickbait but you don't want to be too clickbaity because if people don't feel satisfied by the content that they end up getting um, and they start clicking mm -hmm. away, it's going to hurt um, as much as it helps. So just something to sort of keep and, in and mind. To go a step, and to go a step further with that, um, Alex mentioned it's percentage of how much they watch. Um, you might want to kind of plan your video out really quickly before you go and do it. 
because you want to almost in- incentivize somebody to stick around to the end, mm-hmm. whether it's, hey, we're going to give you a cool perk for staying around, or you change your storytelling arcs, so that way you keep people engaged all the way through the end. Um, and if you're doing something like a live, it's not, okay, I'm going to wait till the last person logs out, right? Right. Because YouTube is tracking what percent of people make it all the way till the end as well. Yep. Um, and that's, again, a big factor in that recommendations engine. Yep, exactly, Craig, exactly. And it's, it's uh it's kind of interesting to see because it's uh oh how do I put it um when folks are a little bit too clickbaity and and be mindful of something too because when I say clickbaity I'm not just talking about that you have to get to your point that you clickbaited them into to be to you know somewhere in your video you've got to do it pretty early on because if we click into something thinking we're going to get the answer to, to a specific... I'm sure we've all done this. And Craig, right? You've done this where we click into a video <laughs> that's like the answer to X. And you get in and you're like, well, but okay, so I have to watch nine and a half minutes for them to tell me about the answer to X. Right? It's You don't want to do that. You need to tell people right up front about how you're going to answer X problem where you're going to do it in the video. You need something to make sure that they continue mm-hmm. watching and don't feel like there's a bait and switch um, between the thumbnail, the description, and then what the actual video content is. Does that make sense to everybody? Yep. Um, and, and any questions in chat, let us know. We are, we'd love to, to answer any of those in chat. Um, we are more than, you know, more than happy to answer questions as we go today. Um, now, after you've come up with some good catchy titles... Um, and some, you know, good headlines for your thumbnail images. The next thing is being consistent. Um, a lot of folks will find that, uh, I don't know. I see this happen a lot where people sort of overthink it and they think they need to go do a really totally different thumbnail image for every video that they're putting out. What you want to do is make sure that you keep consistent to a brand. You want to make sure that, you know, that's the same rough font. It might be different positions in those thirds, but you want the same rough font. You want the same lighting to your, you know, your imagery that that you might have in previous ones. You just want to make sure that it's consistent so that people know it's your brand when they see that in their notifications or they see that, um, you know, within a search result, they can quickly go, oh, that's so-and-so. And especially with the, the interesting part about the recommendation engine that we've talked about is that when you watch videos and you watch a good bit of them, all of a sudden YouTube starts putting more of that same author's videos right mm-hmm. on the homepage for you. So if you can stay consistent and you go, oh, I like, I'm sure you've, everybody in chat has done this too. Let me know if you have, right? Where you like, oh, I saw so-and-so's other video. Let me check out this other one that YouTube is recommending. Um, it's a lot easier for people to do that and to see that visually if the brand is consistent and stays consistent uh, between those thumbnail which, images. Which, by the way, that's that third major component in the recommendations engine. Mm-hmm. So the first one again, is the click-through percentage. How many people actually click, which is why these thumbnails are so important. The second big factor is what percent of people are watching the video, how long are they watching, are they getting to the end? And then the third one, it's almost like a lifetime cumulative um, average of the amount of time you get out of each person. So if Alex only watches my video one time and he doesn't even watch that one towards the end, he never watches any more after that, it kind of hurts my score in the recommendations engine. But if Alex has now watched two or three of my videos, now it actually, he's a huge boost to my score. Yep. So that's why you want to make sure you set up your playlist if you have a lot of videos in there so they can recommend your other related videos at the end of a video and things like that. Because again, they're looking at your click-through percentage, they're looking at the percentage of watch, and then they're looking at the lifetime value of each user. How much are they watching more? You know, getting them subscribe and get those notifications, all that is key. Yep, absolutely, Craig, absolutely. Um, all right, so now after the uh, the being consistent part, you kind of want to follow the trends a little bit. And what I'm talking about here is thumbnail images, just like everything else, follow certain design trends over the years. And I'm sure once we mention a few of these, you've probably seen some of them yourself. 
So one of which is that uh, YouTube, at least right now, seems to really love faces. Whether it's a close-up of you making some funny face or a reactive face, that sort of a thing, right? <laughs> that Can those... you do that one again? What? Let me do it. All right, I'll do it again. Do that, yeah, yeah. There it is. That's the one. Right? I'll get clicks. Clicks. So those sorts of faces along with um, some sort of text or title like we're talking about, those seem to be very, very popular on uh, YouTube right now. The other thing that tends to be really popular are product shots. Now, this might not be as important for real estate, but what I will say about that is sometimes those product shots can be replaced with things like uh, images of a kitchen, um, close-ups of certain parts of a house stage, maybe not the front of a home or the entirety of a home, but something a little bit more specific related to that video that you're putting out. Um, you know, if it's a video about drones and drone shots and taking drone shots for your clients and what they do to help sell the home, you might want a drone shot in there, right? Um, but again, the, the fads right now really tend to be up closes of people's faces, along with some bright colors and some general um, large imagery that takes up about a third of the page. Um, yeah, I was about to mention that because it's also either bold or contrasting colors. Mm -hmm. So in other words, bright colors, or you could have like, like I was talking about like a picture of a kitchen, a little bit more faded in the background and then bold lettering on top of it. Definitely. Right. But it's all about like what's really kind of stands out and anything bold or contrasting definitely does that. Absolutely. Yep. Good call, Craig. Um, so, yep. oh, what were you going to say? Nope. That was it. All right. That was cool. That was great. Um, so, and then the last one that we've seen, I'd say in the last couple of years, that's become really popular is using questions inside of the titles. So asking, you know, some sort of question with that, like shocked face or surprised face or, um, you know, what's the worst place to move wherever kind of thing. And it's this, you know, video about like, well, you know, if you don't like friendly neighbors and you don't like <laughs> whatever kind of stuff in your area, those sort of videos. Um, it, it's really interesting, again, to see that questions and so on are, are last couple of years have become popular uh, and are really standing out. Any other trends that you've seen, Craig? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I can tell you that most of these design trends, you and I talk about it all the time, the ones that are usually ahead of the curve are the gaming industry, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you just start looking on YouTube for any kind of video gaming things or tech products like i can't tell you the last tech product i didn't buy that wasn't based on some gamers or some kind of like geeks video review on youtube mm -hmm. you know i mean and their thumbnails do everything else is talking about they're bright they're colorful their faces and are making crazy faces i mean they're just great at it um so I, I, I i would um this would is I, the this is the uh i'm searching a specific product right here which is a camera that that mm -hmm. craig and i recently purchased Right? Would you pay two fifty for the best webcam ever and a picture, big huge picture of the product? Okay. Yep. Big old picture of the product, four K webcam. Obviously that's a huge searched term, four K webcam. Okay. Avermedia four K webcam and the number with a big picture of the product and a face. Picture of the product and a face. You guys notice any Are themes? Are you sharing the screen on this? Because I'm not seeing it yet in sorry, Facebook, by the sorry, way. Sorry, Craig. Let me, uh, let me move over here. So, sorry about that, folks. Forgot to switch over on the screens. So, um, we see it here, okay? Avermedia. Big old picture of the product. Second one. Thirds. Title. Product. Um, Roman. I'm not seeing it in Facebook. Uh, just give it a second. I mean, usually there's a few second delay, but I'm still not seeing it in there. Are you sharing your screen? Oh, now we are. There we okay. go. Now just Sorry about that. that. Yeah, it might have been delay. That was a little bit of a lag. That's all right, though. So, again, you start seeing our trend, right? Product images, um, large uh, titles using the thirds, faces, okay? Let's go best webcam. Yeah, and look at I me mean, looking at 146, the first guy, 146,000 views. 
Because he had such a great thumbnail and such a great title. You know what I mean? Yep. I'm not saying anything negative to the second guy, but he's a third of his audience, 53,000. Go again. So, so best webcam. 2021 best webcams. Again, what do we see? Picture of the product, big old title, person's face making some sort of expressive gesture. 79,000 views. Uh, by the way, Roman just asked a question in the chat. For real estate, is there a length that affects views? Um, Roman, that's a little bit of a tricky question because it always matters on what the content of the video is. Yep. Now, if you're talking about a property, you can probably get away with up to about two minutes. You know what I mean? Um, if you're doing an, an educational video market update, you can probably go beyond that. But you still got to pe keep people interested and make sure they stay to the end. That's right. the key no matter what kind of video you're doing. Yep. So it always matters on the topic. Um, kind of helps you dictate the length. But like I was uh, talking with a realtor the other day and he was trying to show me his own videos and he's like, these are great. And I was like, they're 22 minutes. Nobody's going to watch a 22 minute video of a property. Yep. You know what I mean, so you got to use some logic, but it, it is determined on the content of it because all real estate videos are not the same. Absolutely. And this is, you know, it's interesting, Craig, of, of some of the pieces of advice that I think cross um, so many different types of media. And I was talking to somebody a while ago about the right length for a blog post. And I started, we started talking right in depth. And this is somebody who had yep. been a professional copywriter, um, multi, multi millionaire in real estate, but built side businesses, copywriting, worked with some of the greatest in the world. And I, I asked him a similar question. I said, well, you know, Craig, what do you, and different Craig, but also, Craig, um, what do you see as the right length for a blog? And he responded and said, Alex, there's no length on interesting. And I went, huh. Good call. And he said, well, he said, you think about it. You, if you read a book, right, and you pick up a book, if the book is interesting, you'll get done chapters, one, two, three chapters reading the book like that. And before you know it, time is gone. And, and time is so relative at that point that you're like, oh, wow, that didn't feel like a long time at all. But on the other hand, you pick up a book that is boring and <laughs> isn't captivating and, you know, doesn't get mm -hmm. me to want to read. Well, all of a sudden I'm right. like, well, God, getting through that first chapter, you read the same page over and over again. And you get through this chapter. It's like it's a nightmare to get through that chapter. I think very much the same yeah. thing goes for YouTube videos. There is no length on interesting, but you've got to be mm -hmm. real with yourself about what your audience is going to find interesting. And if you continue yeah. providing value, you know, giving them interesting stuff and it's relevant to them, um, you know, great. But that, you know, and, and yeah. even with home tours, right? I've seen some one to two minute home tours that are awful that I'm done after 30 seconds. And I'm like, God, I don't want to watch mm -hmm. more of this. Right. And I've seen 10, 12 minute tours of luxury homes that are, it might as well be MTV cribs, actually chase international. They sent these to me last year. Um, they, they have such mm -hmm. an amazing department there that does it. They sent me these like 12 to 15 minute videos of these luxury homes in Lake Tahoe. But, but like I said, it's like MTV cribs and I'm sitting there and I'm like leaning in and watching the whole things and, and excited and wanting to watch the next one. So I really think it's, you've got to be real with yourself on what's interesting. Um, but, but I don't think there really is a length or a limit on interesting just be real about it and make I, sure. I don't, think, um, I don't think there is either to why I answered the way I did. But at the same time, I do like when I teach blogging, social media end of it, uh, I do always kind of remind people what the current user trends are. Right. right. I mean, you're now marketing, communicating to a human being who has a seven second attention span. Seven seconds is it. Right. And the average person really doesn't read much anymore. In fact, there's one stat I give out in all my classes going back to blogging. If you put more than 600 words on anything, whether it's an email, newsletter, uh, article, anything, 77% of people won't read the first word. If they see that long web page with a scroll bar, they hit the back button right away. Or if they see a long email in their inbox, maybe they come back to it later. So to being too wordy, can some, for some people, it might stop them right in their tracks and like, I don't have time for this. So yeah. you do have to kind of 
figure it out for each different kind of piece of material, right? Is somebody willing to spend this much time to watch this? Right. Um, so yeah, you got to, there's no exact answer, Yep. but the kind of content you're creating usually helps you figure that out, Roman. Absolutely. And one thing to think about, and Craig and I will cover this in more depth, uh, in the masterclass next week. Um, you can add different, uh, pieces in your description that link directly to parts of your video. So if you want to give people an easy option to skip through to certain parts or get little nuggets out of something that might be a longer video, there are some options to do that too. And we'll we'll cover that next week. Mm -hmm. Um, Awesome. It's called segmenting. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So, all right. So I'm going to dive back in here and um, let me actually take you over. And now that we've talked a little bit about sort of the, the best strategies and what you want to use inside of a a thumbnail, a YouTube thumbnail. Let's talk a little bit about a way to do this. Uh, It's totally free. It's something we've covered before. Uh, It's a tool called Canva. For those that don't know, you're welcome to go back and check out the previous workshops um, inside of the Agent Inner Circle group. We cover Canva in a little bit more depth. We also hosted a masterclass on that, but that the replays are not available for that uh, currently. So, um, is there an agent out there you know of that would you would recommend to view their material as being effective? Absolutely. Um, there are a few out there that... Karen Carr. Yeah, do, sorry, you want to go ahead, uh, Craig? I was, I was right off the top of my head. Karen Carr is phenomenal, yeah. and she even teaches the topic now. Yep. Um, I mean, there's several that are really, really good at it, but she's, to me, when you talk about the thumbnailing and understanding the youtube metrics out of it she's probably the best that that i've seen big old shout out to karen we love her um she also teaches this topic as well um and you'll notice that hers i mean we're talking about the same thing right expressive faces big old titles and maybe some product imagery um karen does an incredible job with this and uh She's a good friend. She's actually in this group as well. So definitely shout outs to Karen. Awesome. All right. So let me dive on in and we'll create some uh, YouTube thumbnail and give you some options for doing this pretty easily and setting yourself up for success. So we're using a tool today called Canva. Um, As I mentioned, something we've used before, but we're going to show you how to just quickly come in here. Um, right, if you want to go in and search Canva right at the top, you can type in a YouTube thumbnail and you're going to see some options. Okay. Now, YouTube thumbnail, music YouTube thumbnail, food YouTube thumbnail. You can even go into real estate YouTube thumbnail. Now, they're not always great with the YouTube thumbnails for everybody. I tend to, per some of the stuff you get in here, um, you can go and search some of these out as specifically for real estate. I prefer just to look up YouTube thumbnails in general, get a overall category for it, and then pick um, from one of the ones that we see here. All right. So you can see here that there are, they're pretty much trying to do what they can to follow the strategy that we talked about. There is some bold imagery. There's some faces that stand out and a lot of titles that do a great job standing out from the page. Now we can do some great ones here. I'm just doing a quick one here. This was a fun little Arizona stargazing, right? Super easy, already stands out for us. We can come in here, move some of this stuff around, um, and all of a sudden get a very quick, let's say, right, moving to Arizona. Now we can come over here and pick some imagery either from Canva. And we're gonna adjust this 
and tone it down a little bit so that the letters stand out for us. Now this is running right down the center of the page, but you'll notice our top third and our bottom third um, are wide open there. Now I'm going to go back because I want to do a couple other versions. This is just, as you can see, a very easy one um, to stand out there. But I want to show you something that's probably a little bit more of an example or something that you can use over and over and over again. Now we'll pick this one, which is how I prep for the next day's class. And you'll see some basic title, subtitle, uh, and then sort of rule of third imagery over on our right hand side. Now, let's say we want to do a video about, if I search the right place, say I want to do a video um, talking about staging your kitchen to sell. Right? We see this. Craig, you see this one here? I don't know if you get... Uh, yeah, the how I can through. prep the next day's class, or... What was that? Are you about, right now I'm seeing on the screen how I can prep for next day's class on the screen. Yes. It tends to be a few seconds behind. It's a few Facebook. seconds behind here. So I just want to make sure um, folks are seeing the, the opportunity here where you can quickly plug in over here, quick image, say, um, staging your kitchen to sell or right, 10 kitchen mistakes before selling your home. Make this a little smaller or we can dump that in. I'll back this up here. Okay. Take this down a little. and a subheading that might get them to actually take a little bit of action here. Now we can start messing around with some of the sizing of this and how to make this stand out. Um, any, any thoughts or things folks would like to see for a thumbnail from people? Like, is there anything, uh, a video that you want to have made or that you've been thinking about making or something like that? Um, we'll, we'll try to create one on the fly. If you want to throw something in chat, I'd be more than happy to. Um, but I'll go in here and just pick another template and show folks how you can easily, easily, easily set yourselves up for success here. So I'm going to make this a little bit wider. Up there. And you can always say you want to uh, throw a logo in. Right? Keep it keep it simple. What is it? What is <laughs> what do folks think of this one? Love to see it in chat. All right, so um, that's a quick one here. Just a, a very easy YouTube thumbnail that you can make um, right from the YouTube thumbnails templates inside of Canva. Uh, we'll go here and pick another one.
Logo is too big. I agree with you. Meh. Fair enough. I don't disagree. <laughs> Meh. Meh. <laughs> Meh. That's fair. Another great one. Um, using the image as the whole background. We see this happening a lot. All right. Oh, let's move that just to the right there. Can't decide if we'd want that the whole way across. Um, but again, just very, very easy to um, create something here, create an image, and we'll actually dump that in. And we'll take this brightness down just a little bit. All right. I think that one's a little better. I'll take that. That's something that would significantly pop out um, in a notification in everything that you're doing there. Let me know what pe folks think of this one. Again, change it, change it up a little bit. Um, uses the whole image as the background as opposed to just the, you know, moving to or, or um, the one we saw before here, just the one side of it. Okay. All right. Any other uh, suggestions, Craig, for, for ones to try out? Um, I don't know what ones to try out, but I think, I mean, the overall thing, if you're noticing, is total contrast between background and wording, right? And that's what's standing out. Now, you haven't done any that really used a person's face or anything like that in them, which I don't know if you, that might make it even pop a little bit more if there was a person on top of it, um, especially if it's a, uh, I don't know, you, I know you have the basic one, not the uh, uh, pro version of camera where you can do the uh, the background move really fast on the fly. Yep. But adding a person to it would make it even more on trend and stand out even more. That's the only thing. Only other thing I would kind of throw in. I don't disagree at all with you, Craig. You know what? Let me um, let me grab one here. Let me grab an image. All right. Come on, and drop in there. There we go. I got to grab a better image for this, but even something as simple as this, um, not with the image I would necessarily use, um, but even something as simple as this does a lot to make this stand out. Even with that mug. Even with that mug, right? God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I have to subject you all to that. But even, even something as simple as that, um, even just a basic image, a basic, I pulled the background of, out of an image I just grabbed out of our graphics folder today, pulled the background out of it um, and threw it on top here. And you can see just that little bit of a face uh, standing out makes a really big difference when it comes to, um, you know, 
that. Now, the real trick is you want to take some photo that is expressive related to your, uh, you know, what you're going to be doing. So if it's moving to LA, maybe it's, you know, you're all excited or, oh, beautiful or whatever it is. Um, grabbing some photography like that and some, some really, some core imagery uh, makes a, a big difference when it comes to standing out. All right. All right, well, why don't we give them the details on the master? Yeah, you know what? Let's, we're let's go do stuff that. Like this much more plus additional stuff in the master. Yep, exactly. Well, let me um, let me put the link for that into chat. <clears throat> Michelle just said, "I like the thumbnail a lot better with the face added." Right, Michelle? That's what it's about. It's like trying to when people are scrolling, you want something that's just going to make it pop, and doing something like that just really does it. It does, and and those faces. Um, and, and the thing is this, it can be as simple as grabbing your phone, right, and standing in front of a blank flat color wall and just taking a selfie of yourself, um, you know, ha, 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 all the different faces that you could possibly make. Mm -hmm. um, and then using a tool like we showed here, quickly remove the background from it um, and start dropping it into some of the other imagery um, that you see here in yeah. Canva. And, and while you're pulling those details, one thing I'll throw in, we mentioned it earlier, but what really works today, not just in video, really in anything in the marketing world, is just being real and authentic. So it's not about getting a picture of you with, in the buttoned up in the shirt and tie, even though Alex's picture is in a shirt and tie and it worked with this. It's about how, being fun, like he's talking about being expressive and stuff like that, right? Because nobody really wants to work with a logo these days. They want to work with real people. So totally have fun with it. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Um, all right. So I threw the link for the masterclass next week um, into the uh, into comments. So if folks are interested in that, definitely head on over there and sign up. Um, it should be a fun one. And we've got some special bonuses that we are going to include um, for folks that sign up for that masterclass. The first one is that we are going to be giving away three templates of thumbnail images that you can use uh, right inside of your business. So three templates are going to be included there as well as a cheat sheet um, for video ideas. We, we're going to include a huge cheat sheet of video ideas that you can use to easily refer back to um, so you don't have to struggle to figure out what idea I'm going to do, what video am I going to do this week, um, and have a whole struggle. We're going to cover that in depth um, next Wednesday, the is it 23rd or 24th? 24th. 24th. I just put, the, I just put those um, details in the chat. Perfect. Wednesday the 24th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. Yep. So... A little bit different date and time than we did last month just because we both have scheduling craziness on monday um so we're doing wednesday the 24th from two to four exactly so if you're interested head on over and check that out um sign up we would greatly appreciate it um any questions before we close down i mean craig any questions from you <laughs> <laughs> no i think i'm good cool but again, if you really want to take a deep dive and walk away with tools to help you on YouTube, we're going to go over again how to really optimize your videos, how to optimize your channel, get it all seen much better, um, how to do these thumbnails and give you that whole cheat sheet on here are the top ideas of, of videos you could be creating in your business. Awesome. Awesome. Michelle says, thanks for the great <laughs> info. Thank you, Michelle, for coming. Thank you to everybody for coming today. Yep. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. We're closing in on an hour, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this one up. Um, but Craig, thank you as always, my friend. Uh, I greatly always. appreciate you being yep. here. Um, for folks that might be interested, we will be announcing the upcoming workshops uh, in the near future, so stay tuned for those. Um, and before we close down, I just want to mention one more time, thank you to the Real Estate Technology Institute, as well as Service for Life, uh, for bringing this to you today. If you're interested in technology videos on uh, tra technology training for, um, for yourself, check out RETI. And, uh, if you're interested in following up with your sphere, the people that are most likely to send you business, um, repeat and referral business, definitely check out Service for Life. So, um, yep. all right. Anything else, Craig, before we close this down? 
Nope. I think we're good. I think we uh, covered a lot of ground today. Awesome. So. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you to everybody. We greatly appreciate your time. Thank you so much uh, for Craig Grant and myself, Alex Camilio. I hope you have a wonderful day.